Okay. Now, chapter 10 is over on page 361, and, and it, it, it walks us through the, using the different role functions. And when we're finished with this, what we're going to do, yeah, when we finish with the role function sequence, uh, hi, Sue's here. Glad to see you, Sarah. And we will look at column functions and then we'll be at a point where we'll be able to look at some of the cross tabulation functions. Now, when we move to that point of cross tabulations, what will happen is I'm probably going to tell you the, the better tool, a tool far better than our application, far better than uh, access is or any. Now, I'm not going to say that far better than access would be Excel um, pivot table or some of the pivot table uh, applications or functions that are in some of the commercial products like Oracle, SAP, SAS, etc. So before we launch into 10, I want to make sure that uh, everybody knows what's going on. Now, as usual with me, I work ahead in with these cases because we're going to come down to a point where you'll be, uh, I'll be cutting you loose to work on some projects and do some independent study. So Let's take a look over here on uh, week number da, 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 10. I think that's why I have a bunch of stuff come to. I'm, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here we go. On the 9th, well, on the 11th, which is a, a week from today, you have 7, 8, and 9 uh, that are due. Now, I've, I've gone ahead and provided you a key, if you will, or uh, a, a, um, a, a DB that I created or worked with when I went through the top of the class and worked through the text, and, and you can use that to upload. Now, I'll make it uh, visible. I'll publish it. And what I'm hoping you'll do is you'll take a look at each of those and then come back to the textbook and the truth is, over the years, is, uh, is I've taught this, and this, this, the Patrick text has kind of changed. Um, I've just kind of winged it. I haven't had a set, I haven't had a set number of these or a set uh, uh, of these uh, of these queries that I run. I just tend to kind of say, okay, well, this, this, these types of queries I need to see. So it's been very ad hoc. And since it is, I just basically will upload something that's like the latest, whatever. But you'll get enough from this that you'll that, that whatever is covered in seven, you'll get you'll get a good coverage of it. So you have that to upload. Now, if you want to try to upload upload some of them, you're very very welcome to do that. That's up to you. Uh, the same with Lunch's database eight, okay, and the same with Lunch's database nine. Now, I'm assuming that what you'll try to do is either be in the classroom and, and work through it with me, or you'll take a look at it as we go through. Now, if you're, if you're going to do the latter, apart, yeah, the latter, then what you need to do is have your textbook, you need to have uh, the, um, the video open, and you need to stop it periodically, and you might want to take some notes or, or, or something like that. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that, that I'm still getting transcripts created from these I think it takes, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, maybe a day. So you could look through a transcript of the video so you could read it and, and make a, and, and make a, make notes or whatever. If you chose to, that's up to you. Um, now, so I've got, uh, we've got seven, eight, and nine. Those are all due a week from today. Okay. And you'll notice that right here this week, I really don't have anything of that sort, but what I have are some re resources for you to take a, a look at. And, I want to make make sure that I get you that I'm get you highly motivated to look at two particular resources. The first one is this this the, the trends in data warehousing, where where people are headed with that. And say so why would I why, why would I uh, scoot you that way? Well, it's pretty simple. As an end user, or hopefully a decision maker of some importance in, in whatever firm you're in or maybe own your own company, you're going to want to be, have a handle generically on what these, what this application is intended to do for you. And I, I think I've emphasized over and over and over that a data warehouse is a, what is the foundation for what we call 
a dashboard so that we can execute business intelligence. Business intelligence, which is primarily a way to look at the world around us and see what's going on out there and to look in internally and to say, okay, what's going on in my company and how are we performing? So the, um, the, that, this top trend, 10 trends, this, this link is important for you to see. So you kind of get a macro overview or what's happening just in general with these data, data warehouses. And you're learning kind of the insides of them and how they're put together and all that business, which is fine. But you need to understand how they fit strategically with your company because all IT, uh, at one time we, we used to call this the BTEC series, business technology, and we changed it to business information systems and strategies because that's really what it is all about. And all information systems and all information technologies are decision centric. You'll hear me say that over and over and over. And they need to be. They exist to fulfill the company mission. If they don't exist. Okay, now the other, the second is this little piece. And this is on how to, uh, how to download, how to access SAS um, visual analytics. And I've got a, I've got a whole, um, I have a whole document there which you can download, okay? And you'll be working over at Teradata University and I'm gonna have some assignments for you to go over there and take a look at. I really would encourage you, and I think when you go to Teradata University, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, password is still analytics. I think that's what it is. But Teradata University is, um, is a repository and lab set up by Oklahoma State University and some affiliated vendors like SAS who will want to expose you to some of their products so they can, uh, of course, eventually down, down the road make a sale. But it's a great resource for you because it does give you a chance to say, yes, I've seen what SAS Visual Analytics looks like. I've worked with it. And, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I have an assignment in, in here for you to do that. And as I've mentioned before, um, as we work through the code and we work through we work through the code and we see the Oracle version and we see the Access SQL version, you're getting a sense of Oracle and a couple of these chapters like five had uh, some, and we'll see some, some other chapters here that will show you a picture, uh, let you get a sense of what Oracle looks like when you're, when you're using it. And I'm a great believer in that because I think what you're going to see is all of them work from a from a menu tree type of of uh, a process. And as you have a menu of applica a menu of functions or things you can do, and then you can click on it, you'll get some type of tree that you can follow and make your choice. And they're all designed like that. Now, uh, also, if there's an alternative assignment down as we get near the end of the course, if you want to do it where you can take Oracle, a, a baby version of it, download it to your machine and work with it. And I think this is important because I have more and more students who come back to me and say, I really got some serious consideration or I got a job because I'd had some experience working with these databases. And we want you to come out of here far ahead of your contemporaries because everybody understands what spreadsheets can do, but we're still really at the start of understanding what we can do with databases, okay? And the reason is, is really a couple, of, a couple of things. One is cloud computing, okay? Number two is what we call ubiquitous computing, and that's computing that goes on all of the time in all different types of ways. Everything from uh, me sitting at, at home on a, with a laptop to, to, to a, a, an RFID tag, which is radio frequency ID tag on a product, that's being shipped and someone wants to see where it's at. Uh, near field communications where I take a phone and I pay for things or I can take and share data and pictures by bumping the two phones together or getting them in proximity and linking them up. So all of that's predicated and the usefulness of that's predicated on, on databases, a place to store and then extract information. Okay, so I, I, I would really encourage you to take a look at it, and I think it will be worth your while. Now, just to kind of keep us on track, all right, I want to go ahead and, and of course, we're, we're here at week six, 
And I want you to look ahead now again to week seven. And I've got these three assignments to upload, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, those chapters. And as I said before, as I go through this text, this is the third edition of it now, I kind of operated on an ad hoc basis, meaning I'll, I'll pull different, I will pull different queries, but I try to, to, to pull queries of the same type. For example, if, if it's a query that works on, on, a, fin, equi, equi, on an equifinality basis, that is where ID equals boom, or where department code equals boom, I'll pull you a few of those. And then th typically they'll be, they'll be centered around billion operators like equal, less than, greater than, or equal than, and greater than, and then some of the search ones like the IFF, which we'll see that when, when, when we proceed a little bit more. So seven, eight, and nine are there. Again, I've, I think I spoke uh, at some time at length about how to get the most benefit from them. And of course, obviously, you want to get the workshop credit. Now, I will say this, when we get to the end of the course, you're going to find that um, the, the experience you're going through here and as you work through the text, as you have it open, will help you a lot when we come down and you have one of those projects Well, I will give you a set of, of um, check your understanding exercises and you can go in, in the textbook and find those and that's basically they'll tell you here's something that we want to accomplish here's the table or query to use and you will and you'll and you'll put together the query you'll execute it or create a table or whatever it, that that business problem that that, that they'll ask you to do. So you'll want to take a look at that because that's going to be a, coming up here. So you've got seven, eight, and nine. Uh, again, that you shouldn't have any problem. Now, again, I always try to uh, to try to, to to show you some of the practical aspects of these. All right, uh, and so you can you can see why they're useful. Again. This course is about understanding how do I use this thing called a data warehouse that I can store information and I can extract it and I can extract it in a whole multiple of ways. And what does that mean for my business? Okay. Well, as I've said before, primarily <clears throat> it supports your dashboard operation, which is the way you see what's happening in my company. And I, if you've taken a course with me before and probably in this course, You've, you've heard me say that I, I drive clients, clients crazy when they call me and say, we, we'd like to work with you. And I tell them, okay, first thing I want to know is, do you have a dashboard? And typically go, well, we've got this. And I'll look at it, it's kind of a dashboard. And I'll say, okay, what are the five things you need to know every day to run your, run your organization, your church, your business, whatever it is? And they're kind of stunned. I said, tell me the five things. What do you need to know? And so that often, what, what that often does is it encourages a discussion or a dialogue among the folks in that, in that client, what I call that client system, to have some real heart-to-heart -heart thoughts about what is it we do? Because if, you, if there's an old adage, it's, it's this, what gets measured gets done. And so if you're, if you're not really clear about what you're, what you're doing, um, you know, you're kind of floating, and, and that, that reality can be a real stunning type of thing. When I go into really well-run companies, boom, they'll tell me. In fact, they will even, they'll even begin to, they'll even have a, a committee or team or somebody, this is typically larger firms or large organizations, who debate those issues. What is the, what are the metrics that, that are driving us? What is it that, we're, that, that we need to be looking at? because that's all gonna be connected to your company's value proposition that really in the end is a, is, is a, a more sh uh, kind of a shorthand way to say, why do we exist? What's our mission, okay? And if you don't have a mission, you don't exist. Now my parents were two pretty remarkable people uh, my, my dad never finished high school until I goaded him into getting his GED. He went to take his GED. He was in there for about 40 minutes. He came out and I thought, oh, it's been. <laughs> and the, the lady who ran the, the center there called me and said, you know, your dad just blew the roof off this thing. And when he walked out, he said, was that high school? And I thought, 
was in high school, I had to, I had to die in a thousand deaths just to get through some of that stuff. And my mom was the same way. And they were both very, very, very successful entrepreneurs. And the one thing I, the one thing that I got took from them, other than having a good work ethic, was they were focused on why they existed, why their company existed. I remember one time my dad was opening up, opening up a store in Tulsa, and this I was maybe 12, 11 years old, and it was hot. And I looked at him and I said, you know, "Why are we doing this?" And he had a very simple answer. He didn't say, "Well, I want to get a company created." And I, uh, my dream is to take it public and, and uh, cash my chips in, or I'd like to become a conglomerate. Or it, he said, he said, here's all he said, a real stupid answer, but a very profound one. People have got to eat. And then he just went back to work. I thought, okay, that makes sense. People have to eat. Mission statement, people have to eat. Okay. I had the same conversation with my mom because I wanted to see what she would say and she was, my mother was a, a multi-level marketer before people knew what it was and made it illegal. She sold Avon products. Any of you ladies know about Avon or ever heard of it? Avon was the, I don't know what it is, what all of you use now. Um, the, um, but she had, she started selling it. And then she had ladies who was selling it for her and then ladies who sold for those people and I was the bag man. I thought for the longest time I went to church, my job was to collect money from ladies at our church that had uh, bought Avon. I honestly did. I thought, okay, I'm just here to do this. But I asked my mom and I said, why, why do you do this? And she said, it's simple. She said, if, if, and this is, remember, okay, this, my mother was a product of her time. She said, if a, if a lady feels nice about how she looks, she'll feel better about herself. Mm, okay. And so my mother's mission was to help people feel better about themselves. Okay. I saw it was kind of interesting. Uh, later in life, things, you know, she had, my, my parents had the opposites. You know, and you'll go through this and prepare, begin to prepare yourselves. Your, my parents did the opposite things. Of, and they're both gone. And there are three things I learned. One, you never get enough time with them. And all the time I spent working on my career, I regret I didn't spend more time with my parents because they were very, very, very smart people. All of your parents are, you, you, you're finding that out. And the second thing I learned was, as you, we all, it's just like the Bible says, all of us must die. The reality of it for you is not as, is not as potent as it is for me. You folks are, if you take the yield actuarial curve, you're down here. I'm on the top side of that baby getting ready to slide down to the bottom. So for me, it's just a matter of time. Okay. My uh, average age, my family's about 73. So I'm, I'm you know, okay. And the actual, uh, those actual error tables are pretty uh, accurate. So you have to, you, know, you think about that. Now, if I had thought as, as much about life when I was younger, I may have had a whole different life. Who knows? But I'm here I, and, and you live and you learn. Uh, but one of them took a quick out. My dad died on, died, he was like a gunfighter. He died with his boots on. He had his briefcase. He was headed to a meeting. So it's just like a gunfighter. Uh, my mom had a long, slow retreat that took everything, it sucked us dry uh, emotionally more than anything and really tested our faith. And I'll never forget, my mom looked up at me in the hospital bed, and she said, why is God letting me suffer like this? And at that point, glib answers do not work. And all I had to tell her is, I don't know, but you're going to find out. You're on your way there. I said, that's the only answer I have for you. And we'll all have to go through that. And, and we'll have to, and, and so be thinking about that. That's just a piece of, of, of the growth in, in your growth in your faith that has to happen. And when we came to that point where we had to make a decision, the physicians told us, it's not your mother. Uh, it's, it's a body. We had to have a pretty hard nosed discussion and a lot of prayer to figure out what do we want to do? And I hope you never have to cross that Rubicon with my father. It was a pretty simple process. He was dead instantly. My mother was a whole different thing. And all I can say is, it's a great test of your faith 
And, and I'm, I'm thankful I had siblings that were along for the ride because if I had to do it myself, it would have been awfully tough. Well, a little bit of a life, life lesson there for you, and I got off, and, and uh, that's why I don't entertain too many questions because you can get me derailed real quickly. But I wanted to make sure that you take a look at some of these apps, okay? And I have them over here in, um, in week seven, some of these, uh, not apps, but some of these additional resources <clears throat> that are designed to get you thinking about, gee, are there some things I could do with my business degree other than just simply go out and go to work for somebody and make money? And a lot of these types of organizations, these NGOs, they often don't pay very much, um, but it might be a good idea for you. But what you, but what you see in every single one of them is that they make extensive use of database technology, okay? Tracking animals, looking at, looking at, at landscapes, tracking poaching incidents, all those kinds of things. And I've got you some nice resources to go take a look. And it, it, here's what I think is really cool. I'm going to have to tell you, if you're a cat lover, God bless you. I'm a dog lover. My wife and I love dogs, and we adapt, we adopt rescue dogs. And we get, we've get we got one right now. She's as sweet as she could be. The one we had before was, was meaner than the proverbial junkyard dog. He, he was good-hearted, but he, he would uh, he'd pop you if you got too close to him. And I understood he'd been abused. So, And, and this other one we've got now, she was dumped on the side of the road. I don't get people. Uh, but... Again, here is basically a they're really nothing more than a database and then an intermediary between these pets. Look at that face. How could you say no? How could you say no? They're an intermediary between these pets that desperately need to be helped and need a home or they will be euthanized and people out there who need or are looking for a pet. I don't know how much I, you, I shouldn't say this, but I'm a recommended television show if you've ever seen it. It's on cable. Anybody here ever seen Pit Bulls and Crowleys? I love that show because those here are these people have been been incarcerated. They, and I'll tell you about incarceration will, will dehumanize people. It, it, it and it doesn't rarely does it help them. It maybe scares them to, enough they don't want to go back. But to see those folks working with those animals that have such a bad reputation is a pretty cool thing. Well, I thought I would show you that and some places to steer you to see some practical aspects or uses of, of, these, of, this, of this tool. Let's go ahead and we'll go back over to, uh, back to the modules, okay? And seven, eight, and nine, I've talked about those. So we're gonna launch into, into, into uh, 10 today. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I had, I had added 10, okay? Um, let's see if I did or not. There's nine. And I've got some, okay. And I've got some more resources here for you. We've got fall freeze. Yeah. I'm glad I caught this. On the 16th and the, on the 18th, we don't have any class because of fall free days. Okay. I do have you some resources there. You can take a look at, okay. Some stuff like the most popular surname in each state. Some of you will be hunting for baby names before you know it. And before you know it, you'll look down and you'll go, I created this. And for about five or six years, that little creation will think you're the most wonderful, wise thing they've ever seen. And then at about 15 years of age, they will be shamed if they are seen with you in public. You're, you're getting ready, some of you are getting ready to take that roller coaster ride, you're about to have some big fun. So there are some great resources here for you to take a look at, and I would uh, I would encourage you to uh, to to take when you're off that time, you, you go ahead and take a look at them. Now we're gonna we're gonna pop over here to chapter ten, okay? And I have a ten to, uh, to upload, and so let's go ahead and go back into the files, and we'll work on ten. I have ten, eleven, and twelve here, and these are all going to be due now. Back on, we're a little bit out on week nine, okay? So don't get too, don't get too worried about that. But we're gonna look at chapter 10 because 10 looks at some of the specialized row functions. So we'll go back over to the specialized. You wanna go to the files and you wanna get the Patrick materials. Now I conveniently have them on my machine. 
okay? And I'm gonna get two things. First, I'm gonna grab my warehouse, and that's SQL Fun 2007, okay? And then I'm gonna grab the code for chapter 10. And rather than having 10 different warehouses, I've got one warehouse, I have a file of code that takes up far, far, far less uh, space and time. Now, what I would do is I would rename this and go ahead and, and uh, I'm gonna call this SQL Fun. Um, I'm gonna go see uh, chapter 10 and I'll put Harmon on it, okay? Now we're gonna run through that and let's open this puppy up now. We'll take it 11 as well. Let me get this off. Get this over and get the, get the content off. All right, now I have the code. And as usual, what's gonna happen is that a lot of this will start to, you'll start to be able to look at the code and see what you're gonna get or what you should get rather than just having to run it. I hope, and this is this repetition, there's a little bit of repetition here in terms of the syntax that is the structure. Now, uh, let's take a look for, for a moment, for example, at, at uh, 10 2, okay? And this is, and you, you should be able to see this here in the, uh, those of you who are out, in, I, I hope all of you are beamed in because obviously we're dead in the water here. I thought a miracle had occurred, but it had not. I may have to apply the holy fire to it at some point. Okay, um, we're gonna select the current user, okay, as user, and then we're gonna use the format, that's where it gets sketchy, and we're gonna use the now function, which means we're gonna date and time stamp it as date and time, and again, this as date time, that is a pseudo, uh, a, a, a pseudo name, for a column, so we're gonna create this column and call it date time. We're gonna create a column, uh, we're gonna take it, rename a column here and just call it user, all right? And if you take a look over on, they show you that Oracle SQL there, and then you, if if you run that, if you run that task, so let's find the, uh, the, the Oracle, and you can see, I want to show you something real quickly. Page 360, at the top of 366, you'll see where Oracle is a little bit different. We're going to select the user and then to a character. And what they're saying is these are going to be, whatever they are, they're characters. We're going to treat them like that and call it as, as date time. Okay. And on this 10-2, on this, uh, we're just going to basically, um, yeah, select that current. Let's let's run it, and you typically will run into some problems with that format function. But let's see if it's going to be nice. To us. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my warehouse, and I'm going to click uh, create. Okay, and then of course I'll go over to the query design, and close it off, and I'll go over into the uh, into the SQL view, and let's put our there and let's see, we may have run this before, so let's see what we get. And see, there's the problem, is we've got that format function there. It's a little bit, a little bit sketchy. So, let's try to get, uh, let's see, we wanna format it. Now, 10 2 is over there on. On 366. I hate the format function. Is. So let's bypass this. Now, what they show us is what I'm supposed to get there is the user, which would be the administrator, whoever that is, and then the date and time stamp. Um, I'll look at this for a moment and I'll, let me see if I can get it in a day. No, it's not gonna recognize that format. So let's skip that one. But they show you what you should get. But again, you're gonna run into some problems. Now, on 367, they, they show you, um, and this is, this is in the code here, it's task three, one. And they show you one in Oracle style, okay? 
uh, and and then they show you an access style and this is where you're going to select a primary key and you're going to run into a function there called NZ and that means no nulls and you're just simply going to you're going to select a primary key and then you're going to have this uh, no number uh, and then you'll have no text and no date and as the date column the text column the number column from this uh, section 1003 uh, query or table, excuse me. Let's take a stab at that and see what we get. Now, the author was going to some links there to show us a bit of the difference between um, SQL and Oracle. And let's see if we can get this baby to run. And there we are, okay? Now, right there in the middle, page 367, this is kind of a sampler. And what we've done here is we've We've essentially created a primary key. Then we've created some columns, right? Which we've we, what we've used um, pseudonyms for the columns. That's why we go at you see the as. So at this point, uh, we've got a nice little set of data set there, and he shows you the beginning table there at the bottom, page three sixty seven, and then the uh, result table. Now, the the NZ. As he as he explains, deals with nulls, and we don't want any null data. Unfortunately, we have well, we have no number, and so let's go back down to this for just a moment, and go down to the to the code view. Now, <clears throat> what we're doing here is anytime we find a null, we're substituting a text or we're flagging it. Okay, got me. So this is, this is a nice little prototype of, of what we would use. The, probably the most prevalent use of this type of, of, of query would be when people log in and they log in incorrectly or their passwords expired or something like that. Because typically with passwords, when they expire uh, and all passwords is eventually are set to expire, Usually a DB administrator will put a flag in there to tell you, hey, you need to re-register or hey, you need to call the help desk or hey, you need to go through the brand new uh, setup for your, for your log. Now, one of the, I think one of the most interesting experiences I've had with doing something like that was uh, the, uh, the folks where most college people participate in a, in a fund called TIAA, you may have heard of it. And that's where we you know, put our, our highly lucrative uh, earn, earnings. So, you know, when I'm making four or 500 grand a year, I had to do something with it. And so, but when you, if, when you, when your password, if, if you do the online, the password re-registration process is about eight steps. And uh, I'm surprised they don't ask you to mail them in DNA or something. Why? Well, they want to protect your data. So, that, so that's a nice little that's a nice little uh, query there. So we're going to call that ten three, okay? And we'll call it ten three. Ask one. Now, three sixty eight takes you to uh, and, and it takes you to a ten three task two, and this is where you, uh, well, you've got the no text, the no date, and then you have, you also have some data that you put in there. And so again, you know, you can look at the code and pretty much see, look at the code here. I'll go back to it for a moment. Three task two. Yeah, well, here's two. And we come back up to task one. He mixes and matches these and does all these variations. And frankly, sometimes I'm going, okay, uh, I get it. I see what we're doing. Now, 10.4 um, over on page 370. This again is one of these things where uh, he has you do some code, write some code. He shows you an Oracle and uh, access code uh, to, to, to find a problem. Here's the deal. You can go in and change this stuff in the GIS a lot faster than you could if you're going to, as opposed to writing the code. But 10.4, that task 
Um, you're gonna select the primary key and then a text and they just add and you add these columns there's a beginning table and then he's having you do some addition there and some and some uh to, to do some um, uh, operations that's all it is okay now he shows you at the bottom that the that the addition okay on access the oracle table is correct access is not is because it has problems you have to convert you have to convert things to, to, to integers or to numbers in order for it to add them up. Otherwise, you'll get what you've got at the bottom of page 370. Okay, that's all that's going on there. You're just doing some computational work. And frankly, uh, you know, if if you've got if you've got a table with that many values <clears throat> that you're manipulating, I think you're probably better off to go ahead and and, and do the do the math do do the Computation work outside of outside of access if you're working in that or, or a client if you're in SAS or Oracle or some of the others you can do this but it's a lot of times it's going to be just a question of you importing a bunch of records in from a spreadsheet application and, and doing what you need to do um, but you could you can uh, you can run to, uh, and he's just showing you that the corrections for for access there. Okay, notice what he's saying. I'll just show you real quickly. If you, here's 10.4. Now, you're gonna see a function called cint, and what this means is we're gonna convert this to an integer. Then once it's converted to an integer, we can treat it like a number and away we go. Okay, so he's wanting to let you see that. Uh, and I guess if you wanna run that one, fine. He gives us some of the documentation for access as well as, as Oracle over there. Again, now we come to the part of the chat of 10, which I absolutely am going to warn you take your own lot, take procedure to run risk, and that's using the access uh, expression builder. He walks you through using it to create uh, an expression. What I found over the years is that this is a fairly worthless tool. And for me, if I'm going to create expressions, I get a piece of paper, I write them out, the formula, whatever I'm going to do, and then I input them into the code and run the code. Uh, I, I find that expression bill, some of you may use it and find it useful. I just don't. And over here in chapter, here on page, on page 377, he talks, for example, creating a pattern of numbers. Now, to what extent that's of any real value for you, I'm not sure. You can see this is 10.8. You can see, uh, well, let's just go ahead and do it just for fun. And we'll go down here to 10.8. And well, he's got step one, okay? And uh, let's go ahead and do 10.8 step one. Let's just start, was, we'll do, uh, yeah, do, let's do 10.8 step one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select n, okay, and we're going to take three times that as a multiple and call it a and call it that column as a multiple of three from that dimension table. The numbers zero to nine nine. I'm going to copy that. And like I said before, I'm not certain of what great value that will be, but he wants, I guess he wants to see, so you get to do your your uh, threes. There we are. Isn't that amazing? As to create a number pattern. You've seen it, so save it as 10 8. You can see some of these, yeah, they're they're helpful. Some of them, eh, a lot of them you will thankfully not have to mess with that when you're done. Complex patterns of numbers. Um over on page 380, this is 10.9, and I'll just show you the code. If you want to run it, you can. Here we here we run in using the using the uh, mod, okay, that function, and we create uh, uh, we select in as a prime number, and not we use that and not function. So it's basically we're, we're going to do the opposite, and we're going to order it by in. Well, let's go ahead and run it since we're here. Some of this is useful, some of it's not. And again, look, uh, this is a, uh, it's, 
it's a database. It's not meant to be a computational device. I'm meant to do that. So when you look at some of this, you go, oh, this is pretty lame. It is. You have my, but, but look, you have a whole set of prime numbers. Aren't you lucky? All right, let's save that. And that's going to be 10.9. So we'll call it 10.9. Okay. He's just marching us through the different ways that we can work with row functions, or the different types of row functions. And where this is heading us is to is once we've done the row functions, where we take records and we do some type of work with those records, working with the text like concatenation, or working with numeric data, and 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 doing numeric operations. Once we once he's taken us through that tour, then we take a second tour, and that is we look at column functions, aggregate, and we and the column functions tend to be aggregate. Uh, types of, of, uh, of exercises where I'm getting, primarily I'm getting counts or I'm getting sums. And once I've done that, then I'm ready to do cross tabulations. And that's where I say, you know, go find another application because it, it's, it's, it's fairly, fairly limited. Okay. Now, um, that's 10.9. Like I say, you know, I kind of go ad hoc with these because some of these chapters have got some stuff that's really useful and some of it's just, Okay, you see, I, I could do that if you want to. Um, they've got over there on page 382, he walks to your creating a view that contains uh, seven dates. Okay, and he's gonna have you uh, do you've got a step one, okay, and you've got the uh, the account the uh, date of constants table. It's over back, but look, take it for a moment, take it pop back to 381. Now this is one of these where he walks you through a series of steps and I think you can move through it a lot quicker. If, if you really want to run the queries step by step by step, go ahead. I think you can probably see it as we go along. This first one is going to create a table, okay? And we've got, we know the table name and he's going to have a beginning date, okay? And a date time, all right? Then once he's created the table, He's going to insert data values into the table. You say this sounds like a job for the, the, the table creation and then a form. You're exactly right. <laughs> but the author is old school and wants you to see exactly how it's done. Okay. Um, and maybe it's useful. I don't know. Um, if, if you're like me and, and, and you get juiced, uh, getting the, looking at the, checking your oil level and putting in some. Uh, uh, wiper fluid and that kind of thing. If, if that for you is like high mechanic, you know, like a real interesting thing to do on Saturday, good. Uh, otherwise, you know, proceed with your own caution. That's as far as I go because the rest of it looks like spaghetti to me. When I'm in there, I go, I'm not going to mess with this. Now, over on 32, walks you through that uh, the second step of creating a view containing seven dates. Okay. And again, that's that's a row function where we're just simply taking them and and we're we're and notice that he's, he has the select C date, okay. And we're going to have a beginning date plus it is, so we're treating the date as a number. How do I know? Well, look at the operator, okay. You see the plus operator, and that's what's going on. And then we give it a column alias as days, and then we. Pull it from a number zero to nine, uh, and the this section ten constants where the digit is less than seven, and there we are. So we converted those uh, to we we converted those uh, dates to numbers. So there's a conversion process, and that's that really is something for the realm of of a data administrator. Let's look over here. Um, Anything else that might be of just great fun. Uh, page 385, he walks you through creating a table containing, uh, containing all consecutive days, okay? Um, and you could, you could see it yourself, You've got the select in. And now again, that's that dummy variable that we've got over there. And then we, we're gonna convert the dates to numbers. And we give that that we give it a column alias, 
and we're going to select that into that count the table uh, section 1011 calendar and we're getting it from the numbers 099 table from the a, a field in the boundaries and where the, and then we have a condition uh, the start date plus end is less than the end date and we get consecutive data consecutive dates now I would say this this weekend uh, if, if you don't have a date uh, or there's nothing fun to do uh, and you've got your own machine run every single query in chapter 10 and send me an email and I will refer you to student services okay. well, let's take a look over here on page 386 same kind of thing here where we're deleting some days getting rid of some nulls he shows us the, the, the step. There's a multiple step process whereby we go through this. And I'm not going to have you walk through it. I just want you to understand that he starts with, he creates a table of constraints. Okay. Then, he, then the second step, he has a table that can, contains all constants, pardon me, and then all consecutive <laughs> days. Okay. So he creates constants and then all consecutive days is page three to five, three to six. He has you delete some data and change some data to nulls, okay, so you can build a, a blank line. And then finally, he shows you the, a uh, report display. It's a lot of work. And the value of it, I'm not sure. He's got some other stuff near the end of the chapter here about how to find out how old you are. Um, And um, you know, how many days old you are, and you can do that. You can put in your birthday, and you can select now. The now function is obviously is right now. Boom, away you go, and you can find how many days old you are. That's 10, 12, if you think that would be beneficial to you. Um, he's got some other stuff like that. Um, then he shows you how to do some line numbering. I'm not sure. There on 292, he shows you the order by clause. You're used to this in terms of when you're working in, in the design view, okay, of sorting. You want to put it in, and how do you want to have it ordered? In this case, he orders it by price and description. And by default, any of these databases will will give it will give you a uh, um, an A to Z. It'll give you the beginning, the smallest to the largest, the start to the end, that type of thing. Um, even he, he he shows you some of the glories of algebra using access. And look, if you're if you're doing some of this, maybe you ought to break out Excel. So that's pretty much for ten. Okay, not what I would say is the most useful, but it's interesting. But to let, he wants to let you see now. You say, well, okay, what's the main takeaway for this? I think for from a practical basis, the main takeaway for you is you'll notice that several times, first of all, it's multiple step. Secondly, you often have to take the data, dates, for example, and convert them to integers, all right? Now, the nice thing about Excel, for example, is if I put a date into Excel, I can just click on number format and it will show me the number. So I can do date type of work. And with those of you who took 1123 with me, remember we had an inventory, no, we had an accounts receivable problem or we took the, the date for a given, we, we took a date on a given day, converted it to a number, and then we took the last time that people had paid us, and we figured out how, how far they were in arrears, okay? So you've got 10 there, and go ahead and, and, and save that, and then upload it for your 10, and, and we'll be good to go. So I think I'm, okay? All right, now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep this, Let's see, we got a little bit of time here, and I want to take some time to look at, uh, to take, take you through a quick tour. I think we can do that on chapter 11, okay? 
And if we don't run through all the code, I at the very least want to make sure <clears throat> that you kind of understand what we're headed to. Remember, I talked about the rows, the row functions. The rows are records, all right? And those records are made up of several columns, i.e. several fields, i.e. several dimensions that together create a unique record. Well, we've learned how to take those records and do operations inside of them, operations with text, operations with numeric data, operations with date data. Dates are ambiguous data to a machine. To you and I, they're not, but to a machine, they're very ambiguous. And machines don't know, does this human, are they talking about something that means time or a quantity? Now really, uh, July 1, for all intents and purposes, 2018 is a quantity. Because somewhere someone started saying, all right, let's, boom, away we go. But subtleties these are lost on machines like that. So we have to do some conversion of those dates. And, and that, that, those would be the main takeaways, I would say, that probably from that chapter. And understanding that you can generate that record. You can, you can generate that data. Let me say this. As we, swam, as, we, as we swam through the code and looked at those, I mean, step one, step three, it should be apparent to you, and this is part of the growth process of understanding this, to say, I'm probably better off to let a database do, be a database and use it as such and take the records and export them into an application that I can, I can easily work with the data and put them in a format I want, and then even more importantly, take those data and depict them in a, depict them visually. You got it? If you get that, you're ahead of 95% of the people out there working. I'm going to tell you that right now. And please, when you see these, this stuff like these information, you'll see all these info, infographs. The one I hate the worst is the radar. I hate it with a passion because I don't, what does it mean? What is it telling me? And it shows me radar. And I'm going, this makes no sense to me. That's why when you, if, when you took 1123 with me, business problem analysis, I took that Stephen Few text, show me the numbers, and I crammed it down your throats. <laughs> so you'd say, the simpler, the better. The more correct, the better. There are appropriate ways to show certain types of data. If I'm dealing with categorical data, for example, I'm typically going to produce a bar chart that shows counts. If I'm working with, with proportional data, like percentages, I'm going to use a pie. If I'm working with time series data, I'm going to use a line chart. And you'd be surprised at, at how, that, how, how that gets violated all the time. And that type of miscommunication can be really, really, really a problem for a company if you're, if you're making a big decision. Okay, well, you've got chapter 11 at the start there on page three, three, 401. They walk about summarizing data in a column, okay? And, and they use the term at the top, aggregate data. Aggregate data are counts. When we work with a field or a table or a column, we're dealing with, or a dimension, we're dealing with what we call categorical or nominal data. You're going, oh, get me, the, get me a cross and garlic to sell it stat all over again. Yeah, right. It's, the order, it's, it's what we call the level of measurement. When I can just count something, that's the crudest level of measurement. And so I, I, if I'm just counting something, and typically dimensions like a column are stuff I can just count. Okay? I could, uh, if I have everybody's ages, I'm not dealing with, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not dealing with nominal data, I'm dealing with interval data, okay? And let me, let me say this, and I will probably, uh, any of you who've taken uh, any courses, doctor work or anyone else, I hate with a passion, ordinal data. Give me a Likert scale and I'll burn it right on the spot. There's no way you can tell me that a five is two and a half times greater than a two. You can't. Now there are those who believe that Marketers are probably the greatest villains of, my, of this story because they'll tell you, 
here on a scale of one to five, how do you feel about this? Can somebody tell me about one and five, the difference between the two? No, you can't. And since you can't, uh, now psychologists, marketers, all kinds of people have made a living off of those scales. Likert scales are the ones. So I want you to know about. But now, 403 and this chapter 11, they we're going to walk you through the column functions for both access and SQL, uh, access versus Oracle, excuse me, and the meaning of them. And then some of the examples of the column functions, okay? And things like finding the minimum and the maximum value. Now, take a look there for a moment at, 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 11, at chapter 11. Now, what I'll do is I'll plumb through some of my old files for 11 and I'll put one over there for you to take a look at. But here's one, and if you wanna run the query, go ahead, it's up to, it's your choice. But if you look at the bottom of page 406, you're going to see where we're going to we're going to use the minimum and the maximum those functions. And so here we start. We select the minimum, and this is credit limit, and the max. Okay. Then we get the maximum, uh, and we get the first name and the last name, and then we get the maximum hire date from the employees table. Okay. So you can see we're getting credit limits and they're getting first names and last names. And we've got those in, in, in a descending order. And you can take a look at the output and the output's right over the next on page 406. Okay. Like I said, I'll upload an 11 for you to take a look at and, and play around with, but you, you can see and, and as we look, column by column, we've got the employee ID, okay? And we, in fact, we said the, uh, did we put the employee ID? No. So the employee IDs are in there in order, but we're driven by the last name. Now, let's think about this for just a moment. Think about the letter S. Is there any, is there any first name that starts with a letter that's deeper in the alphabet than S? Is there a T, a U, a V, W, X, Y, or Z? In the table, no. So why would they do that? Well, the author's a show off, and he wanted to prove that he's a big shot. And I think he's a heavy drinker. I, I'm just saying that. But on the last name, that's a different proposition. And so what are you talking about? If you take a look at the last name, now notice we said on the uh, on on the on the last name we wanted the the maximum. And what, they, and what they did there in that employee's table was to come across and just start to look for those maximums. And they just started, the, the machine just started reading the digits across, okay? And you're going to end up with the result table. And you're going to, and you're going to get Susan. And then you're going to get Woods. See the result table? Everybody? Yeah? Now, this is important for you to understand. This is why you had a chapter about indexing. When a day, in fact, I was criticizing Dr. Walker should break in his class now and tell him he's a charlatan who's selling people um, Likert scales. No, I think what we'll do is I'm going to get some people together and we'll do a medieval thing. I think we'll burn it with a stake. Wait, how many say burn it with a stake? What an apathetic group of people. Here we're getting ready to do something Christian medieval, burn people with a stake. Hey, like our stick. I liked how the pilgrims did it to determine if you're whether or not you were a witch or you practiced witchcraft. They tied you in a chair, dunked you in a lake. Now, if you drowned, it was obvious you did, you did not practice witchcraft and didn't have the power, but you were in heaven. If you didn't drown, you were definitely a witch. And I would imagine there was someone who could hold their breath and came out of that lake one day. I would have been hot footing it in my, in my big pilgrim hat back as far as my log cabin as I could get and lock the doors. But that's because people lived in a time when they had no lights, no street lights, you're out in the boonies, 
and it's a little weird. You're in a, you're in a continent removed from everybody else, and you're out there, and you're going, whoa. Okay. Now, what the machine did when it looked for the maximum was to say, okay, where will I find in a descending order the letter that fits that? And the cluster is going to be what? W, X, Y, Z. There's going to be a cluster if we said the minimum, it's going to go what? Go up to A, B, C. The machine is taught through the indexing. The indexing is set up to do that. Now, when you hear people talk about artificial intelligence, all they're really saying is the indexing is on steroids. That's all that's going on. And it can be trained to look at sights or sounds and categorize them and go find what would be most typical, etc. That's all that's going on in this query. Okay? But we use the, we use the column function to end up with this maximum hire date, this maximum credit, and the maximum first name and last name. Got me? Now, I'm gonna, I, I, I wanna emphasize something very, very important to you. This little, this simple little query tells you a lot about how powerful this technology is. The, the ability for the, a, a, a database, for a machine, to have an index and to apply that index to a data set means we can make it iterative because it, Google, when, and I'll, I'll show you real quickly. Instead of just standing here jab, jabber walking at you. Let's go back over here. Go uh, open up your, if your browser and go to a new tab, all right? And I'm going to, I'm going to do a Google search on Aaron Judge. Anybody know why I did that? Aaron Judge, any baseball fans? Aaron Judge, what do you do with judges? They say, I'll rise. So I, you people aren't Americans if you're not into baseball. Hey, you probably fall in some foreign, foreign kind of sport. I don't know. But let's look at Aaron Judge. I'm disappointed we don't have more baseball fans. All right. Now, before I resolve that out, Watch what, watch what happens. I put in an A, okay? And it, it, it senses that R, and it starts to give me an ARPANET, okay? And I put in another A, and it said, wait a minute, you're, you've got some caps on, so you're trying to do something here, but I'll just go ahead and be nice. And I'll put an O. And it's, and it's telling me, hey, stupid, you've misspelled it. How do I know? How does it know I misspelled it? Well, it's done this a million times. 10 million times, 20 million times. Lord knows how many hits the man's had. So let's do Aaron Judge. Let's see. It got us videos. Okay. It got us just some statistics about him. Um, he is an interesting fella for a baseball player because of his dimensions. He's six foot seven, 285 pounds. He definitely could play pro basketball, probably pro football. And you can imagine the length of his arms, the pitcher would have to throw outside to him is gonna be about six feet away from the, from the base. And he can rocket balls out of there, like incredible. He's kind of a prototype of the new player that's going to be coming along. One of the interesting things, are there any baseball fans here? Probably not. But unfortunately, if you're not, you ought to maybe take a look at it because it's a different, kind of a different game than you might anticipate. But the thing that's amazing to me is how those folks have morphed into physical specimens. And these guys are like 240. Uh, a guy is 6'3", 240. Looks like he'd be a running back in the NFL. He's playing second base. So anyway, all that to say, as we started to do the search on him, the machine started to resolve it for me because it's had an index. What made Google so rich and so powerful is they had the secret sauce and algorithms. And what they did is they said, every time someone does a search, 
Google learn from the search. Every time you refine your search, Google learn from your search. You got me? Now, once that happened with words, semantics basically, now there are folks at places like Stanford and MIT working on the, the robot. So when it steps, it's vision, whatever visual, visual device it has embedded in it, will see, oh, okay, I need to put my foot right here, not right here. Now you and I do it naturally. We learned it as babies. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? The good Lord made you and I, and we just know this, we just learn this stuff. Smartest thing in the world is about a, an 18 year old child because at that point they can learn virtually anything. Kids who've been in multilingual homes, if they're in a home where multiple languages are spoken, they pick up every single language. You learn languages. You earned hundreds of thousands of words by the time you were you know, screaming at mom because she wouldn't buy you candy in the grocery store. And you learned how to get her attention. Well, all that said, the indexing that occurred there, that's just a very tiny little example of how that all happens. And I wanna make sure that you saw that because that makes this a very, very powerful tool in terms of data extraction. Um, 11.4, this is over on page 407. And again, I'm just kind of walking you through it. You can run some of the queries or I'll upload something for you. I think you see, am I correct in my assumption that as we've kind of worked through this, we can, you, I can go through a query verbally and you can kind of see and look at the beginning and the end. Is that, like, am I correct in that? Or am I indulged in a strange fantasy? Yes, no? Okay, good enough. Let's look at the bottom of page 407, okay? Now we're gonna use the where clause with the column function and watch what's gonna happen. Now what we're doing here is doing, the where clause does nothing but further refine our result set, okay? Just like when I did that search for Aaron Judge, I started getting all those little cues on re resolving it. It's the same thing going on here. And we can see this, we're gonna select the minimum credit limit, the maximum, maximum first name, maximum last name, maximum hire date from the employee's table. So, okay, I know, slight query, good enough. And then we have the where clause. We're getting an ID and we're gonna use a new, here's a new function between 202 and 206. Now we've used some column aliases here, okay? But we use the between. And, and, and that literally means what it says. I want everybody between 202 and 206. So if you really feel strongly that you should take that copy, get, get open up the text, copy it into Excel, run it. If you feel strongly, please feel free. If not, you know, I'll pop an 11 up there. I'm more about you understanding this than you just sitting here. I've done all that for you. It's the thought part. So if you look at this now, the next question becomes is, why would I choose between 202 and 206? What's gonna drive that? That's because I like those numbers. Or if I add them together, they're the, they're, they give me a pentagram and, and I'm a devil worshiper. Oh, why? For some business reason, I wanted everybody between those records. And so let's look at, take a look at the bottom page at 408. Now let's see the beginning table and the ending table and you'll see that extractive process. <clears throat> we've got all the, we've got 10 employees, okay? And now when we apply the where clause, we do what? We filter it down, we extract down to, there's what, one, two, three, four, five. And so we're always in a process of taking a big gob of data and whittling it out. And I'm going to tell you a quick story and then I'm done with you. You go, thank speed of heaven. I really never understood. Well, look, okay. I did my dissertation on text recognition. All right. This is a long time ago. And I am, one of my professors saw it was way out there, and I was. But that's for another day. Really more like maybe a chapel session where I confess all my sins to everybody. 
and then tell them how much OB you meant to me. You've been through those. Well, my first job in academe was at a school in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, which is Southeast Missouri State University. If you're from Missouri, you know about that area. It's down there in Blue Hill. So you get, get a map today and you'll see Missouri, just like Oklahoma has Panhandle, okay? Missouri has a boot heel. There's been a certain symmetry in my life. I said, boot heel, panhandle, okay. Well, there's a little time, there was a, there was a firm there in town and they had a very unique relationship with the university, particularly with the business college and, and the College of Science, especially the College of Science. About every two years, the folks who were teaching uh, chemistry would go over to that firm and work for them for a year on projects and the folks who were doing R&D would come over and teach. What a fantastic opportunity for students in that field to learn about the practical and the real. Well, they were, they had a, a guy who was vice president of sales and they embarked on, on a very ambitious process, a testing process, and they would do destructive and non-destructive testing. And at the end of these tests, especially the, the, the uh, destructive tests, they'd be, they were testing risins. You know what risins are? The plastics, okay, to a, a compound. To make a long story short, they'd have the stuff that was left over, they'd have residue. And so he started, once they had some residue, he'd go, let's, let's write it down and get a little index going of what the compounds are, what the conditions of the test are, what we got. And then they came to us and said, can we put this into something like a database? And so we had a couple of people and we worked on putting together a, a very, very crude database for them. And it really wasn't a database, it was a SPSS program for a table. But to make a long story short, this guy, he's running all these tests and he's collecting this data and he has the conditions of the test and what the compounds were left over, what the inputs, the throughputs, the outputs, that bit. So one day they call the school and the president of the university calls the dean and says, can you get your faculty together because I've got a project for them. Okay, here we go. And the president, he was there and was with the guy who was the owner of the firm and he said, I've just had an offer <clears throat> to be purchased. Could you guys help me work out what I ought to ask for? And we we're all sitting there kind of going, okay, I, we, yeah. So we all, we made that kind of a project and started working with them. And the finance people weighed in on their models. The marketing people weighed in on some models. Some of us looked at intellectual property and that type of thing. And I kept thinking to myself, as we, as we learned about the firm that wanted to acquire them, I kept asking myself, why do they want to buy these guys? What, do they, what are they after? Is there a person? Is this a locational issue? What's the deal? And then it occurred to me, they want that database because they may see find some potential products in there that would that would go overlooked under, otherwise and, and they wanted to buy the database that's what they were after and sure enough as things went on as the, as the negotiations pro progressed the guy who was our contact came back and said, you know what they're really interested in? And I said, I think they're interested in your database. And he said, you're right. And I said, do they see value? And he said, they wouldn't say. I said, well, that probably means they do. And so the owner said, well, I've got to up the ante on this. So they upped the ante and bought them out. And I learned that database is a pretty powerful thing because they wanted that intellectual property. They wanted those, those, common, those test conditions. They wanted the, out, the outcome of those test conditions. So if you think this is a lot of gobbledygook, it and eighty percent probably is. I'm teasing. Let's say thirty percent, but the other seventy percent, good stuff. Okay, I'll upload a uh, upload your tens, or I'll upload a ten and eleven. But uh, I think I've got a ten up there, but 
I'll figure that. Don't worry about that. But take a look at 11 and play around a little bit and get something uploaded. It's a couple of weeks or so away from now. Okay? And so we've done a little bit, and when we, on Tuesday, we'll talk some more about column functions. Okay? Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, anybody, is there a question I can answer for anybody? And for all of you out there in uh, your numbers diminishing rapidly, they're on the run. Anybody? Add drop periods over, I'm sorry. Did I have a sufficient monotone and boring, did I make it boring enough today that some of you got some shut eye, you probably need it anyway? Okay, good. I'm glad to glad, let me know because I'm I want to educate the whole person. And so if you're not getting enough sleep, come to my class. I'm asleep right now. I'm in Tahiti. You'd never know it, would you? You're just looking at a virtual thing. That's all. My virtual presence. Thank you, folks. God bless you. Have a good one now.